Hello and welcome to the D2C podcast. I'm Eric Dick, and today we are having part one of an in-depth discussion with Yotpo, the most powerful text marketing platform for e-commerce brands. Now, the SMS channel, if you listen to this podcast, is you know one of the most keenly discussed parts of a modern marketing stack. Uh, so we brought on SMS veteran Maggie Dunn, product marketing manager at Yotpo. Welcome to the D2C podcast, uh, Maggie. To start with. I just wanted to know what are some signs like everyone is thinking about SMS. Everyone I talk to is either starting their SMS platform or thinking about it or knowing that they should be doing it. They're not doing it yet. What are some sure signs that a brand is ready and should invest in SMS marketing? For sure. And thanks so much for the warm welcome, Eric. So nice to be here. Really excited to, to chat all things SMS today. Um, yeah, there's definitely tons of signs uh, that you need to think about as a brand as you're looking to explore SMS as a potential engagement channel for your brand. Um, and I think a lot of it starts with looking at your mobile consumer. I mean, this last year, even years before, we've noticed that the consumer uh, behavior has really changed. We've seen an increase in mobile usage, 30%. Um, we worked with Shopify and found that 67% of sales uh, from Black Friday, Cyber Monday this year came from mobile as opposed to 33% on desktop. So it's clear that a lot of customers are on mobile. It's the, it's the preferred method. Um, I have my mobile device right next to me. Like we're all guilty of it. We love being on our mobile device. Um, so just knowing that that's where customers are, you know, you need to think about meeting your customers everywhere they are. Um, so meaning like the existing channels that you might be communicating with them on today just might not be suitable for the mobile consumer. And there's no more channel more innate to mobile than SMS, right? Like it is paired hardwired to the device in a way that, you know, you don't have to go into your Facebook messenger or anything like that. It's just, it's, it's right there like natively on the device. So it's the most intimate channel you can have with a mobile user. Exactly. And I think brands are doing a lot too, to make sure that their websites are mobile optimized, um, you know, just being able to uh, view new products right from an email you might be on, on their website, through mobile, everything is suitable for the mobile consumer now. Um, that's definitely not to say that, um, you know, it should be the only engagement channel you are on. Um, we still believe, you know, email is, is definitely top of the line when it comes to generating revenue. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of brands are also seeing that email is, is plateauing or it's, you know, it's becoming stagnant. Um, if you think about the email open rate compared to SMS open rate, I mean, it's pretty crazy. Um, maybe on a good day, you're at a 20% open rate with email, maybe 30% on the high end. Um, but with SMS, I mean, the, the stats speak for themselves for that channel. It's a 98% open rate. So if you think about those customers that aren't opening your emails, I mean, that's a, a huge chunk of them that you, you might be missing out on opportunities to, to be able to engage with them on your mobile device. Totally. Uh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. I think email is always going to be that, that rock, but as, uh, more brands get on email, it just means that the inbox is more clogged and, uh, and it really will just be those brands that really have that voice and that relationship with people that, uh, that, that win in that sort of competitive environment. Totally. And that's not to say that, you know, those uh, consumers that do prefer mobile um, engagement, you know, through text, don't prefer email. Some, some do prefer both. You know, it's just a matter of what the customer ultimately prefers. And that's why I think it's just super important that um, you're letting customers know, you know, when they have that opportunity to opt into either channel, setting those expectations, you know, this, these are the types of engagements you can expect to receive from us via text. These are the types of engagements you can expect through email, just being super clear off the bat. And, you know, just, um, I think customers will, will really appreciate that. That'll build the trust uh, right then and there. Um, and you'll, you'll know from there on like which channel you should be engaging with a certain customer on. I like that. I've, I've, I've been in organizations that have been sort of phobic about complicating the sign up form in any way, giving people more options or explaining, you know, really just trying to get what you're trying to get. But I think with this modern customer, you're absolutely right. And, and just through law with SMS, you have to be pretty clear about, about, yeah, just as you said, like what you're going to be receiving by email, what you're going to be receiving by SMS. Do you recommend that brands give people more choice into that they opt, they can opt into one or both channels? Totally. Um, I think our preferred method of uh, an opt-in pop-up strategy would be to um, just have a, a few different steps in the capture process. So 
you know, maybe that first step is capturing their email um, to receive, you know, that 10, 20% discount that you're offering. And then as you proceed through the steps in order to get that discount, um, then ask for their, their mobile number as well. And, and that way they're opting into both channels um, all through one pop-up versus, you know, having multiple pop-ups appear on your site, you know, that could get frustrating to an end user. So I think having them, um, you know, hand in hand via one pop-up is, is the ideal way to go. We wrote about that in an issue probably three weeks ago, I think, where we talked about a pilot house client that was using a two-stage um, sign up essentially. And, you know, we have the, you know, you have the pixel fire, you know, if you're running ads to it, you have the pixel fire, you know, after the email. So you still count that. Um, but you know, you, you're, you're looking for those SMS conversions as well. And it just happens in those two stages without, so you, and you, and we, and we found almost no drop off, um, from right. that, like not everyone gave their mobile number, but like it, it's, it didn't affect the, the cost of the lead in the way that maybe adding mobile number underneath the email would, you know, just anytime you add another field to someone's field of view, their, their chances of filling out go down. So I think by breaking it out into individual fields across two stages, um, you get the best of both worlds. Yeah, totally. And then I think too, like that gives you an opportunity once they opt in, maybe they weren't sure if they wanted to be part of your, you know, your text club or your email club, just being super clear in your welcome message, uh, via text or, or email, just letting them know, um, you know, what they can expect. And I also think that's like a great opportunity to then, um, you know, start engaging with them one-on-one -on -one and, and ask them what their preferences are. Um, what, what are they interested in when shopping on your website? And that way you're getting that first party data and you're understanding more about your customer um, so that you can be more creative and thoughtful when you're engaging them further. Um, I love that. I think that can really I personal. How do you do that at scale is my question. How do you, how do you have, because this, a lot of my questions around SMS are, uh, you know, the tone you take, the amount of text you can have, the kinds of conversations, like the way to use it in a way that's like complementary and additive with other channels like email. And, and I thought, and so, so you saying that, that, you know, sort of that idea of like opening up conversations, um, how does that actually work technically? Is, do you have someone on the back end manning all those conversations in person or do you have them go through, you know, once you ask that questions, is it, ask that question, is it more of like an automation that people get? Yes, yeah, great question. Um, so I think one person behind the scenes, it would be a, a burden obviously for, for brands, especially smaller brands that are wearing a ton of hats and, you know, just having to think about another, um, you know, thing that you have to, to take on. So um, Yapo, one of our, you know, differentiating values that we have um, for brands is uh, with our flow builder. So we're able to, um, we have what's called conversational flows. Um, so you can essentially automate those one-to-one -one conversations. So for example, let's say I'm a beauty brand and I sell uh, makeup and skincare, right? Two different types of products. Um, so if a customer does opt into SMS, you know, right from there, I can start asking like, Hey, thanks so much for joining our text club. We're super excited to have you here. Why don't you start telling us, you know, what are you interested in shopping for? Reply one, if it's makeup, two, if it's skincare, three, if it's both. Um, so that's an automated message. It's sent immediately. And we know that customers obviously want that immediacy if they're engaging with you over text. So being able to, to automate that and then carry on the conversation. So if they reply, you know, um, uh, skincare, you know, any time that you're coming out with a new product that falls under that skincare collection, you know, you'll have that data that they had originally said, I'm interested in skincare. So you can further target them um, through our, our segmentation tool. So it, it really has this full uh, 360 approach um, as soon as you opt in and engaging customers throughout the turn, their journey. And you probably port that data into your CRM as well so that your email now knows what their interests are as well. Yes, yeah, so you have the option to, to download that data and kind of put it anywhere uh, you want. But I think the, the value add is just being able to save it and have that for, um, for future segments that you can then use to target your customers. Because at the end of the day, that's what they're looking for is those more personalized messages. And SMS is a great way to deliver that. I love it. Okay, so back to the, the, the question, which is what, you know, what brands need to look for, you know, to, to show that they're ready uh, to jump into SMS marketing. The first one being that their email platforms had gotten a bit stagnant. What's another sign that brands should be looking for to know it's time? Yeah, totally. Um, I think just uh, the, the main one is that they want to drive more revenue. Um, Applies to everyone, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I want less revenue. Maybe Elon Musk might say something like that. Yeah, I think time. this is a sign that it will, yeah, everyone will say yes to it, you know, think yeah. immediately, okay, SMS, I'm going to look into it. Um, but no, really, uh, the, uh, 
<laughs> the results, I think, speak for themselves. Um, we see 25x ROI across the board for SMS marketing. Um, brands are seeing, you know, upwards of 20% of their revenue coming from SMS. Um, you know, brand in particular, Alkaline Herb Shop, which I believe you'll be speaking with. Um, they're, you know, they invested in SMS really to have those one-to-one -one conversations with their customers. And while doing so, they were generating 20% um, month over month um, revenue from, from SMS marketing alone. So I, I think it's one of those channels that, you know, you, you put a little in and you get a lot out and it happens really fast. So, you know, one um, maybe hesitation that we see brands uh, talking about is just, you know, I, I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know if my customers are going to want this. Like, it is totally fine to start small, right? Like you don't have to go on with a full on strategy for SMS um, with all these different campaigns and automations that you're gonna be running. Like really just start small, um, turn on an abandoned cart flow, turn on the welcome flow, enable an, an opt-in tool, and then just kind of let it sit for a month, see how things go. And then I think once you see those results pour in, you know, you're only gonna wanna add on to that. So, being more, more confident uh, once you see the initial success. So hands down, it is, um, it's becoming one of the top revenue channels for, for our brands. But you think, but the entry drug is the abandoned cart flow that, that just sort of like, that's the minimum that you can get on. You'd basically advise that you start capturing email, turn on the abandoned cart flow. Is there anything like once you, once you get someone's uh, number, isn't there almost like an expectation that they're going to receive something or, or is that just, is that not the case? Like, it's almost like once you give them that, like, shouldn't, shouldn't there be a welcome message to sort of welcome them to the program? Or do you just yeah. recommend just sticking with the abandoned cart flow to start? No, definitely, definitely want to welcome them in. Um, that's like your your first opportunity or like your first impression um, on this SMS channel. So um, absolutely, if you're going to start, you know, have that welcome flow in place so that as soon as someone opts in, they're getting a message from you so they know who you are. Uh, maybe you include a contact card so they can save your information so they, they you know, know who you are future for future texts. Um, and then also that abandoned cart flow is what we find is just like um, such a revenue uh, a driver for our brands. Um, but yeah, I mean, abandoned carts, like I think what, what's the average abandoned cart rate, probably around 60, 65%. That's clearly lost revenue. And I, I think going back to just talking about that mobile consumer and how distracted they are in the day to day, there's so much going on. Um, you know, maybe they just need that little nudge. Yeah. Um, so texting is like a, a perfect opportunity for that. But to your point, Eric, like I think you, you make a huge point, you know, you should be continuously texting them. You don't want to go dark because as soon as they opt in and if they only receive a welcome message and maybe an abandoned cart flow, and then months later, you know, you're, you're letting them know you have a sale going on. They might kind of look at you like, oh, I, I totally didn't remember I was even signed up for these text messages. So you don't want that to happen. You just want to find that nice balance um, where you're, you are consistently um, reaching out to your customers through text. Nice. I, I had a, I caught a, a, um, a Twitter conversation with a, a friend of mine, Lily, um, from Three Ships uh, Skincare. And she was talking about her SMS uh, platform, her SMS strategies, and how she, you know, she's an expert of brand voice. They've got this really fun, fresh brand voice. And she made all this effort to build a whole flow in her brand voice where she's trying to be engaging and cute and clever and all these funny things. Um, and then, and, and it bombed this particular, this particular one bombed. I don't know what the exact purpose of it was, but she said it didn't do well. Then she sort of switched it up to be a lot more just sort of straight to the point. Here are the discounts, here's the product launches, like, you know, and, and, and I'm interested in, in your thoughts on how brands find that balance, um, of, of how to use voice in their SMS marketing. Totally. Um, yeah. And I think SMS is that perfect gateway for you to explore, um, play around with the copy, see what, what works, what doesn't work. You know, I think that's where analytics and reporting can come in, like to understand, you know, which campaigns are, are performing well and, and others that may not be. And what are you doing with that copy? What's, what's actually moving the needle there and driving those conversions? Um, you know, I, I think we, we like to recommend, you know, playing around with GIFs and images, emojis, like have fun with it. It is a, kind of a, a playful channel versus um, email where, you know, you have so much room to be more creative in that sense. But, you know, I think SMS proves that, you know, it, you should be engaging in it. And how can you do that when you have 
such little, uh, you know, room to, to share your message. So, you know, I was speaking to a brand a couple of weeks ago and, you know, his, his approach is just to be like, you know what, we are short and sweet. Um, we like to be playful with it. Um, but you know, it is at the end of the day, a notification. So we use it to our advantage when we're doing product drops to be like, Hey, limited time only, um, you know, get it while it lasts. You know, I think giving that sense of urgency within the text message can really go a long way. So, Great you know, tip. create that FOMO feeling, um, let them know it's limited time, it, it, making them feel like it's a headline. So maybe you want to follow up with more content in an email, if you do want to tie it in with your email strategy. So I think there's a lot you can do with it. Um, but I do think, uh, you know, it, it, there's room to, to play around and, and share your brand voice through that channel. You mentioned FOMO in terms of customers. I think FOMO is another one of those reasons that we're talking about, about, you know, how brands know that it's time to invest in SMS. Like literally every person I talk to on the, on this podcast is building out their SMS platform or has already just built it out. Like it's something I see on Twitter in the D2C communities. I just feel like everyone's kind of you know, getting to the point where SMS is just like a must have in your marketing stack. Yeah, absolutely. And I think once brands see or hear that maybe their competitors are using SMS, I think that really brings out the FOMO. Um, we ran a consumer survey and I think it was around 50% of consumers were already signed up to receive texts from brands um, with who we polled. And, you know, that right there, like, your competitors are, you're, they're already engaging with those customers on that channel. And I think, you know, you, you might be losing out on just revenue that you could be driving from, uh, from the channel alone. So if that doesn't um, kind of push you towards uh, SMS, I'm not sure what will. Yeah. I, you know, the other, we, we talk about getting your customers for cheaper and then getting, you know, building their LTV, building their AOV, their average order value and bringing, you know, and, uh, and growing their LTV, their lifetime value. And so once they've signed up, once they're on your list, they're an owned audience. You don't have to pay Facebook any, you know, any more to reach them essentially. Um, and, and SMS is just one of those tools that's just like super built for retention um, to, to keep people, to let them know when their orders are coming up, what, you know, when the renewal's happening, what special offers are available. It just seems like, the, like an ideal tool for retention. Definitely. And I think it ties really well with your most loyal customers. Um, so, you know, just speaking to the Apple loyalty product, SMS and loyalty really do go hand in hand for retention. Um, and I, you know, we found that Princess Polly, one of our brands, 50% of their loyal customers are actually already on SMS. So they're, they're able to take their strategy with SMS a little bit to the next level and create segments of their customers when they are reaching out with campaigns. So they're targeting their loyalty based customers or tar targeting their non loyalty customers. And what they're finding is they're generating more ROI from those campaigns with the loyalty segment alone. So, you know, I think um, brands that have those loyal customers that are so excited about engaging with the brand over text and want to really have those one to one conversations through text, like they're ready, they're willing and able to sign up. So, you know, you're, you just need to meet them where they are. Um, and connect with them um, on a deeper level. And I, I think um, it's super important that you need to let your, your customers know that you do have an SMS channel. So once you do start investing in it, share it with the world, like have an email campaign, go out on it, obviously have a pop-up on your website, um, social media, have a social opt-in tool. Like again, your customers are going to be everywhere, no matter where they are in the buyer journey. Um, so it's just super important that, you know, you need to make it clear that you have this new channel for them to engage with. Love it. I, um, was reading up yesterday, obviously we're as an agency at pilot house, like living in the post iOS 14 world. Uh, and I was just reading up a little bit yesterday on iOS 14.5 and, and its implications for email marketing, uh, and how they're sort of like deprecating open tracking, uh, in, I don't know how, how out there that is or how accurate that is, but that's my understanding is they're sort of deprecating even things like open tracking in emails. And I'm curious if there are implications on the SMS side for this sort of Apple's war for privacy. You know, it's super interesting you mentioned that. I just saw that news yesterday, actually. Um, I think it's still so new that I, I don't have too much information to share on that. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely something we're going to want to um, invest more, more time and thought into. Um, so we'll, we'll see where that goes for sure. 
Yeah, I brought it up with uh, another big ESP yesterday, and everyone's in the same boat. It's 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 like iOS fourteen, just like a, a month later or whatever, right? Where everyone's kind of in the dark. We have an idea of what's going to happen, but we don't know how it'll it'll all shake out. So it's so it's interesting times in the uh, privacy and tracking world. That's for sure. Totally, um, and I think it shows that you know you need to be that much more strategic in the way that you are connecting with your customers to to the point where they trust you enough to actually share their information with you. Um, which goes back to the point we were talking about earlier, just how important it is to let customers know when they opt in, what are they opting into, what types of communications they're getting, and all of that. Nice. Um, so we covered, you know, some of the objections that people have uh, when they're not into SMS. You mentioned that people feel spammy, you know, that people feel that SMS is, you know, spammy or invasive. Uh, and you and I, you then followed that up by talking about how like 50% of people have notifications on, you know, for, for brands for SMS. Like it, it is a it is a much more accepted thing in our culture, you know, at, at this point. Um, what any other objections that people run into when uh, when they decline SMS? Yeah, so I think spammy is a huge one. Um, another one too could be just that you know they're they're unsure if they're able to take on a new engagement channel, which totally makes sense. I mean, think about all the different you know tools they're already managing today. Um, you know, we were working with a brand, uh, American Hat Makers. They um, they're leveraging all of our products right now, and you know they were like. All right, we're we're taking on SMS, um, and they were able to like, you know, set up the the main flows like the welcome flow, the abandoned cart flow, um, a couple opt-in tools, and um, they kind of just let it let it sit, and um, you know, didn't pay too much attention to it. Not because you know they they didn't want to, just because their resources were so strapped, and um, you know what they realized, they're like, you know, we can do so much more. We're seeing the revenue come in. We just we we want to be able to optimize it. So. They actually enlisted uh, the help of um, their agency Curio and um, their Yapo CSM to kind of join forces in and um, and see what what we can make of this channel and um, just little things of optimizing the copy um, to be more of the brand voice, um, enabling like the the loyalty and reviews integrations through SMS, so customers were getting loyalty updates uh, via text and just adding on little by little, um, they were able to just take their, their revenue that they were seeing and increase it by 80%. So I think, you know, it is totally fine to, again, um, you know, start small and we recommend that, especially if you are a smaller team. Um, so don't be afraid to do that. And don't be afraid to ask for help because I know our CS team is, is here and able to, um, to connect and work and understand what their, the brand's goals are and really just be an extension of their team and, and help really drive um, the optimal strategy. So don't be afraid to, um, to seek that help. That's why customer success managers are there. And that's why Yop was willing um, and able to, to make sure you're seeing the most success with SMS. Nice. Uh, what are some brands, are there any brands that you just love personally that, that you have a SMS relationship with that you think are doing it really well out there? I do. I, I'm guilty of being signed up probably for way too many texts, but you know, I can't, I can't you have get to. away it's research. from it. Yeah. It's research. It's also just, yeah, exactly. It's, it's more research than not. Um, but I think Steve Madden, um, pops to them. They, they're doing a, a great job capturing my attention, just letting me know those like promotional updates. Um, also, Princess Polly, I've been shopping there a little too often than I should be. Um, just again, they're they're able to just grab your attention, like they did a um, like a secret sale where essentially they didn't unveil what the discount code was through the text, but you you essentially had to click through to find out what it was. And I there's something about that that like just made it super enticing um, to make you click through. So again. Props to them for, for being able to, to create such um, powerful messaging that really can, can drive attention. And I know for them specifically, their, um, their primary uh, demographic is uh, Gen Z. And if you, I don't know how much you know about their attention span, but it's very small. Um, so they, they kind of have to intertwine that into their strategy. Like, how are we going to keep their attention? How are we going to keep them coming back and, and really only thinking about us um, all the time? So... Uh, I think it just as long as you are consistent with your messaging, and I, that's where the effectiveness is going to come. Um, obviously, you, you know you don't want to be messaging someone every single day, 
Um, but that's where I think it also comes uh, in handy to reach out to your customers and understand what their preferences are and, and what the relevant offers would be to them so that you can really customize it, segment those groups of customers and, and really um, hit home your, your messaging to each one. I love that. You got the Princess Polly click through rate. I'm just wondering what that must be. If you got a 90% open, 98% open rate, and you have to click through to get the the promo code, uh, like I always, you know, as a marketer, I just think about the cost of clicks, and they're just they're just so expensive. Uh, and if you can get a click, you know, a 98% open rate and a 60% click rate or something like that, like that's just extremely asymmetrical. I think in terms of like the the power of the SMS channel when, yeah. when you combine it with tactics like that. Yeah, totally. I don't know the click through rate at the top of my head for them, but I do like we did a case study recently with them and um, they were able to drive millions in revenue um, in just a, a few short months. So they're killing it. And I think it has a lot to do with the strategy that they're um, they've implemented and just the fact that they're they're dedicating um, time, you know, every single month to, to make sure that they have their SMS campaigns built out. They built out, um, you know, SMS calendars, you know, they're really on it with um, with their approach. So uh, it's, it's working well for them. Nice. Well, I'm excited for part two of this interview that I'm going to take with Gabe to dive into a little bit more of the tactical side of SMS marketing. But for now, if people have heard enough and they're just like, I got to work with Yapo, uh, what, what do you, what do you recommend they do? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> just do it. D to C sent to you. Yeah, of course. Um, no, seriously. I think it's, it's a channel that, you know, I think your customers are there. They're willing to engage. They're ready you just need to pull the plug. And again, don't be afraid to start small. Don't be afraid to enlist the help of your, your customer success manager, strategist. You know, everyone is, is willing and able to help. We know, we recognize this is a newer channel, but it's a channel that is here to stay. It's a channel that will eventually become one of your top revenue generating channels. Um, and I think, you know, hopefully the results speak for themselves just in terms of SMS alone. Um, but also Yapo SMS as well. So, you know, just read our case studies and um, I think you'll be uh, pleasantly surprised with the results should you uh, invest in SMS. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming on the D2C podcast today, Maggie. Uh, thank have you, a great rest of your week and uh, we'll catch up with you again soon. Awesome. Thanks so much. Bye.